Join me right now on Kumite TV is surging welterweight prospect Brock Weaver. Welcome to the show. So, I'm, at, I'm actually at, I'm actually at Waffle House. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. I thought for some reason I thought it was gonna be at nine o'clock. I got the time mixed up wrong, but it's all good. Yeah, it's all good, man. Um, now, talk about yourself, Brock. You know, where are you from? Where did you grow up? You know, what is your martial arts background? Um, I grew up in um, McIntosh, Alabama. It's a very small city, man. We ain't got no street lights. We got a uh, $1 store, two gas stations, a bank. And one main highway and everything else is dirt roads. Got a population of about maybe 800 in, in the town, you know. Mostly full of uh, my tribe members with the, with the tribe of the Moa Choctaw. We're a state-recognized tribe, still battling to be federal-recognized. And I started training in boxing when I was 12 years old with my, with my uncle. He... Uh, he was a 10 and 0 pro boxer, Nick Reed, and he uh he fought Roy Jones Jr. uh six times in the amateur, and uh then uh, was gonna go to pro, but he had little little issues and and um, with uh, some injuries, so he never made it um he never he never made it past the really really big fights like Roy did, you know, but um. I grew up around, man, just fighting, training. I uh, started doing MMA when I was 15 with my older pro cousin. He was a pro MMA fighter at the time and uh, the only one fighting from the reservation. He was uh, in fight. He had, a, he had a pretty good record before he retired. And then uh, all me and my people know is fighting, really. It's all we're known for around here. I started fighting and training MMA with him when I was 15. I had my first amateur fight. I had my first amateur fight when I was 16. I uh, actually used a fake ID with one of my cousins. He was he was, uh, he was 21 at the time and we had the same last name. So I uh, snuck in a bar called Guitars and Cadillac and fought a 33-year-old man at age 16, grinding him out to a decision. He won split, but uh, everybody remembers for that fight. They said, man, you're a kid and we know you're underage, but we're going to let you keep fighting until somebody finds out. People were there. The fish was finished to find out. I got a little fine, and I come back and started fighting violent fights, amateur, when I was 18, and I've been, uh, I had 22 amateur fights, a lot of amateur boxing, tough man contests, slug fest, and um, I went, I made, I went pro when I was 21, I'm 27, and uh, yeah, led me up to here, man, you know, 12, almost 12 years running, and I'm, uh, getting my shot you know were you hooked from the beginning were you hooked from that fight at that bar at that what was the bar called guitars and cadillac yeah guitars and cadillac you can't you can't forget that type of you know bar no. were you hooked from that from the beginning that first fight man it was like that that feeling of, of being locked in a cage at a young age with a grown man that done did a couple of them I ain't gonna lie, I was scared to death. But that was like after he punched me that first time and woke me up, I, I was eager to get back in there. I, I think I fought uh, two months. Two months after that, I just kept fighting, man. I was just like, I lost my first, I think, three. Yeah. Oh, and 0 and 3 in amateur. And then when I went, when I first tasted, I was about to give it up. Everybody was telling me to just give it up, man. You know, you, you ain't got it. You know, so I got that first victory. I was like, I ain't giving it up. I, I love the. the the feeling to win, you know, I got to taste this. I got to at least make my record, even in, even in three and three before I quit. And then after, after that, man, I was just going up and down, and I just, I just fought as much as I can. I would fight weekend to weekend on different organizations around, you know, the South. But yeah, I, I was hooked. So it's all I was ever known, man. I, I watched anime growing up, real big Dragon Ball Z fan. And I just remember being, you know, just just being inspired by Goku, man. He just wanted to fight the strongest people, you know. He just win or lose, he just wanted to fight them. That's how I felt like I, I I've always been. If you look at your pro career, you had some up and downs in the beginning, but now you're on a six fight win streak. What has changed in you to be able to, you know, get this success the last couple of years? 
Um, really just, uh, get, getting, uh, really, uh, just settling down, man. Getting, uh, I went up and down in my career. I started partying a lot, just becoming a local hero around here. Kind of just every, every same story. I think that, that, uh, fighters, any pro athlete really goes through and they get that first, you know, before money, you become, you become local famous. I mean, you're still broke. But you, you feel like you're rich. The people around you, they drag you to these parties and clubs. And they drain me. Started working in them. And, and uh, I would just, I'd become a, a, I'd party four days a week, train three or four days a week and go in there and fight. You just can't do that, you know, and be and fight these pro athletes for taking it serious. You know, I believe uh, I'm mar- I've been married one year, but I've been with my, my wife almost uh, three years. And I believe getting grounded and um getting you know um just getting a woman and stabilized and just help helping them you know settle down and finding god man you know and getting uh getting my roots back in in my in in my religion and just trying to become a better person and a better man and, and staying away from all the uh unrighteous things in life is uh Help me these last six fights, you know, for sure. Just keep a, a straight, a straight mind. Well, all of that leads to June 18th. You're heading to Vegas, like you said. You're gonna face off with Leon Shabazzian. Now, this is for the Contender Series. Talk about the day you got the contract offer. Um, uh, I had been, uh, I had been expecting a contract from him. You know, my last two. Of, Two fights, probably. Definitely, I, I fought uh, two fights ago. I fought one of my teammates, Tyler Hill, in uh, on Island Fights, 51 maybe, I think, or 52. And it was supposed to actually be Dana for the Dana White looking for a fight show. But he had to cancel the day at weigh-ins. He called and canceled, said he couldn't make it because he hurt his foot or something. And the John Jones card got, got it switched and... You know, Jones had to, they had the whole card switched over from state to state, and it was too much for him to be there. I think so. It was like a a big letdown. You know, so my manager was like, "Man, you know, we should go in this fight, acting like he's still watching, win this fight, get some kind of contract, late notice fight, or for sure we on we on the contender series." You know, that's still all is like you don't know until he gets it. And then I won again. I fought again. I fought Freeman and. I won by uh, arm triangle choke, but they, they call it a disqualification because his corner threw a bottle at me, thinking he was out, so they disqualified him before he tapped. So I'm a regular disqualification, but I really got the submission win, you know. And um, after that, it were, in the back, they said that uh, they had talked to Sean Shelby or somebody, and they said, uh, be ready for June, contender. You know, so ever since then, I've just been looking, and then the day they called, they was like, all right, Leon Shabazi, that's who we fight. Bet, you know, perfect matchup for me. Tall, young kid, never really been tested. I like it. Let's go. You just said that someone threw a bottle at you when you had the submission yeah. <laughs> locked in. What, what was corner. going through your mind, man? Like someone threw a bottle at you, you know, in the cage. Well, I, I didn't know really, man. Look, I, I finished the choke. I felt him tap. Referee pulled me off. But the referee didn't see him tap because when the bottle was thrown, the referee, the, the corner jumped in to go grab me. And the corner actually jumped in the ring and grabbed me. But I thought it was the referee touching me too. The referee was touching him, pulling him off. When I got up, I just started celebrating. I got my hand raised and they said, winner by disqualification. I looked at him. I was like, what? What are you talking about? It was like, man, in his corner threw a bottle at you and jumped in the ring and touched you. I was like, when? I was like, I didn't see it because I didn't see it. You know, and then. They were like, yeah, you, you won by disqualification. I was like, no, nah, he tapped. They was like, yeah, but he's cornered through the bottle first. We had disqualified. I was like, man, that's bull crap. So then we went and watched the tape, and I was like, see, he tapped. But you watch the tape, the, the bottle did get thrown, and the dude did jump in the ring right before he tapped. So it, like, robbed me of my of my win, you know. I, I really didn't know he even got in there and threw the bottle at me or nothing. But he thought his guy was out, and he I guess he was just trying to protect him, you know. So... You know, that fight was in the beginning of February. So you've been in basically fight camp since then. It's been a long, long camp for you. 
Yeah, man, I've been, uh, I don't think I've been in fight cap for this last year. I ain't really took no breaks. Just been trying to just stay ready for that call. I fought a, uh, fought a Baron Oak. I took a 10 month break since last February when I fought, uh, Charles Bennett. And I fought a Baron Oakle fight, the Baron Oakle Championship against Joe Diesel Riggs, the co main event on the Baron Oakle 3 in October. And then ever since then, I've been in camp. And I feel like I've been just training and just, just trying to get a lot drop out fight, waiting on the contender, whatever, you know. You've been jumping back and forth between welterweight and lightweight throughout your career. What makes 170 a better fit for you? Well, it makes me happier because I get to eat Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fatty, man. I, I like to be happy. You know, I got to go to 55. That I sometimes watch, you know. Can't can't go eat this Waffle House. It's good food. But um, I, I, I can bounce back and forth, man, you know. Um, I'm going to pick my fights. Try to pick my fights smart at 170. I kind of want to fight these. I'm going to be a small 170, so definitely want to fight strikers. It's not got no, no collegiate, back, collegiate wrestling background, you know. And if I do have to fight one of those guys, I'll drop down to 55 and fight them where I'm, uh, I'm taller and longer and a lot bigger than a lot of the 55ers and, and use my range and my pressure, you know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, being at 70, I'm a lot happier. Being at 55, I'm a lot bigger and longer. Now, you go to Vegas. What type of performance do you believe you need to have to get the attention of Dana and that contract? Um, I think I gotta have the same attitude these last two fights, man. Live or die. I gotta leave it all in there. And the time it says go, I can't come out there and, and be slow. I'm a, within the first two seconds. I wanna make contact with him. I let him make contact with me. I gotta be fighting. I gotta be fighting like like a, like a crazy bat, man. But I feel like when I fight high pace, I see everything, man. I see everything just coming at me slow mo. It's crazy. I just I, uh faster I fight, slower I see things. It's been clicking for me, so just keep a high pace, man, making an exciting fight, get out there and scrap. You know, hopefully you don't want to wrestle and make it a boring fight. Hopefully you try to stand in the middle with me and go toe-to-toe -to -toe and let's hurt each other. I believe that's what Dana wants to see. He wants to see people uh, trying to hurt each other, man, and, and I believe I'll get a contract off one of those kind of performances, you know. All right, well, you know, nowadays, fighting, of course, you have to perform in the cage, but what else do you bring to the UFC? What separates you from all the other fighters that are already there? Well, one, they ain't got no Native American in the UFC. That's always been my thing. The Chattatushkas, the Choctaw Warriors, what that is in my native tongue. Um, the the way I come out, man, you know, my boys, we dress up, we put the paint on, it's 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 real, you know, and and um, I believe, you know, I'm very marketable. They like to market people. They like to market off the story, the background. I've been showing them to my my reservation, my people, things we own. I believe. Uh, I can open up some eyes, get a lot of followers, sell a lot of tickets, the way I fight, the energy I bring. I always come out, man. I feel like the walkout is like a movie. I bring a lot of necessity, you know. I, uh, not, it's not bragging. I just I feel like even when I was on the local show, you know, people, people, buy, people buy tickets to see me fight because they like the energy I bring, you know. And, uh, I believe the UFC is going to love me, man. Everybody said, you're going to be Dana White's golden boy one day. So I'm going to take Connor's spot. <laughs> Hopefully fight him and become a millionaire. Well, everything starts, man, on June 18th, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series in Las Vegas. Um, man, I appreciate the time, Brock, and uh, enjoy your uh, waffles, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. What's up? My name is Brock Weaver. 
Brock the Chata Tushka Weaver, uh, pro fighter, record 14 and 4 on a six fight win streak. And I will be making an appearance on the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series June 18th. I want to give a big shout out to my team, Port City, to one of my main training partners, Blake Singley, gave me a black eye tonight. Uh, sponsors and Steel Nutrition. I uh, want to give a big shout out to my local promotion that uh, gave me all, about all my pro fights, Island Fights, and um, they're on UFC Fight Pass. want to give a big shout out to my the promoter there the, and my manager, uh, Dean Tool, Graham Kawa, first round management. And I uh, want to give a shout out to my tribe, Team Owa, you know, they've been behind me. And that's about it.